Today we're going to be destroying a vacuum cleaner, repairing a 1964 Impala door, and doing our very first body filler tutorial. I sure hope we get it right. So uh, here's the driver's side door. It's actually not in too bad a shape. Got uh, some rust in here that's going to have to be patched. Oh. Stress crack right here that will have to be welded and this isn't too bad you can see where it's starting to to lift and bubble in this corner from rust I guess I'm supposed to weld up these mirror holes here at the top as well as the side trim holes those all have to go away and the rest of this is actually looking pretty uh, pretty decent near as I can tell but we do have the rust in this corner here which is I guess at the front we'll have to put a patch in here and here's the back corner. You could see there was rust on the inside and this is bent over, obviously. So I don't know if this is going to need a patch. We'll know once we peel the inside out, but we will have to straighten this out, obviously. <laughs> So what I'm doing is shaving the trim holes on this door and what I've done is I just uh, cut out some little circles out of 18 gauge sheet metal with some tin snips and then clean them up with a file. And then what I did is I taped some copper circles which definitely aren't pennies in case anybody from the Canadian Mint is watching and I just taped those from the backside and then I can lay my uh, little circle in there and then I can just go around and weld that very slowly. I just use masking tape to hold the copper from the backside. Furnace tape works a lot better but I don't have any right now and I didn't want to go to the store because it's going to the store is scary. So we're just going to weld these up slowly. I know some people like to uh, just jam a chunk of copper from the back and then just weld it but I find for uh, anything any larger holes like this uh, you don't it just adds too much weld and the weld is the problem is the weld is harder than the surrounding metal so it starts to create some uh, some problems there so I prefer doing it this way with these little plugs uh, some holes like this I'll just zap up with the, the mig these are probably okay I'm not sure about these yet but any uh, larger holes like I don't know what this is probably half inch or so this is a bit too big to be trying to weld up in my opinion so uh, this is the way I'm going to do it. This is just the way I'm doing it. You can do it however you want though.
I got our little corner rust patch welded in and kind of rebent this edge back. And we also welded up the mirror holes. Apparently the plan for this door is just to epoxy prime it and then drive the car as is an epoxy primer. It's not getting any bodywork or anything else. To actually get this door straight, there's a lot of waves and dings and things. So it would need a light skim of filler over the whole thing to get it actually straight. And that's just not in the cards on this project, or at least that's my understanding. So I'm just kind of roughing in the metalwork, uh, getting rid of anything obnoxious and the rest is just whatever it is. But of course, I was watching YouTube and I found this great new Bondo trick and I really want to try it out on something. And I figured, well, I'll just uh, Bondo up a couple areas on this for free, just so it looks a little better. First area here of concern is where I welded up all the mirror holes. There's like 800 extra holes here and the metal was all stretched and pulled out and beat in and pitted and whatever else. So the proper way, I guess, to, if I was gonna be like metal finishing this out or whatever, would be to put in like a patch here and just get rid of all that twisted bent up metal and then it's not just a bunch of weld there. But there's a brace in behind where this mirror mounts. So I couldn't like metal finish it out unless I cut that brace out, which that's just, uh, that's just an insane amount of work for very minimal gain. And you know, even though it looks pretty horrific right here, if we actually put a, a straight edge on it, like it's actually uh, really pretty straight there. So that's, no, it, it, all it would take is like a thin coat of filler to, to straighten that out. Stuff like this, even though it, it looks ugly, it's actually, you know, straight. And if you tried to like super smooth it and tried to work all this out, you'd end up just doing more damage than, than what's already here. But uh, because this is the driver's door and you know, you're gonna see this every time you're getting in the car, even though it's just going in, you know, flat primer or whatever, it's still kind of not really the nicest thing to look at. So I figured we'd just clean it up a little bit for the guy, do a little bondo here and uh, it'll look a lot better. Uh, the second area of concern is just right where this edge was creased over here. We got it back so it's actually straight now, but if you look at like this, it's all kind of ugly along here. Doesn't look all that great and somebody's already ground over this at some point in the past. I'm not sure if it was just the factory that got a little carried away when they're grinding the edges or if somebody's repaired this before it got bent again. But either way, this edge is kind of pretty thin here and pretty uh, fatigued. So again, proper way, I guess, if you're like totally metal finishing this would be to cut out a patch and like weld it in all nice and whatever. But again, you don't have access to the backside. So, and this isn't actually like rusted. So again, like you're gonna do hours of extra work just to make it 1% better, probably not worth it, but see, it is fairly straight, even though it looks ugly. It's just another one of those things where, you know, you don't wanna keep working this to death. It's already thin here and, and beat to death. So we don't wanna make it worse by trying to make it better, I guess, but, uh, just so it looks a little better, we'll also do a little little bondo work here just to just to get it that uh, make it more presentable, I suppose. It's actually a very exciting day. This is the first uh, bondo tutorial we've ever done on the channel. I haven't done one before because uh, I see there's a lot of other people doing it already and I thought it was a fairly straightforward process until I discovered this new technique that I want to share with you. Plus it's also an easy way to uh, get views on YouTube and you guys know me I'll do anything for views. Alright so we got this all cleaned off with wax and grease remover uh, and we blew it off made sure we got it as clean as we possibly can get it and now this next step is extremely important uh can't remember why oh uh yeah uh if you don't do this next step the bondo won't stick so let's get into it
hey, finally Bondo time, we got everything cleaned up. Pretty excited. How about you? So this is the new Bondo we're gonna be using. I got this out of the back of a guy's van and he told me this is like, this is the stuff. This is, a, this is the best Bondo you can buy. It's like space age and everything. Astronauts use it. So uh, we're gonna give it a try. I'm, uh, I'm just uh, really looking forward to this. Let's go. A bit of a yeah, custom that's... job here. Oh, sh <laughs> hammer quick! Oh, go! Yes! Oh, Whew. don't you hate it when your metal work starts to harden <laughs> off like that? Kyle, you old clickbaiter. Probably figured it out by now, haven't you? We're actually using uh, lead. We're not using Bondo. It's not some new kind of Bondo. Just lead. Good old fashioned lead. Uh, it's actually a mixture of lead and tin. 70% lead, 30% tin. I know it's, oh no, it's lead. It's the most horrifically dangerous thing ever. The way I figure it, uh, people have been using lead and tin for the last couple thousand years and uh, while it's probably not the uh, greatest thing in the world for your human consumption that's uh, that's the key i guess is just uh, don't consume it you know uh don't uh, don't eat it and uh, don't breathe the fumes and probably not worse than anything else that we're exposed to or that we put in our system on a regular basis now, uh, the Romans there, uh, they put it in their, their wine and their food. And, uh, well, I mean, uh, things didn't turn out too good for them. So uh, probably wouldn't recommend that, but uh, teach their own, I suppose. Supposedly, long-term exposure or long-term use of this will uh, cause uh, brain damage and erratic behavior. But uh, well, I'm not totally convinced on that.
So this uh, top area of the door here that we're working on, it's you can see it's concave here. It's got a dish to it. So uh, we're using, so on that we're using one of these uh, kind of half round Vixen files. Um, and it just kind of gets into there fairly well. I think I got this, yeah, this, is, this file's from Eastwood. And yeah, it's just a half round fix and file. You can see how the the teeth are curved to the side to allow the shavings from the, the lead to kind of not get all caught up in here and all munged up. For the flat surfaces, we just use, you guessed it, a flat fix and file. Same deal, curved teeth on it. Let's all the shavings pass out the side so it doesn't get clogged up. And the flat surface obviously prevents you from filing a giant dish into it. This uh, doesn't really work as well on this dish surface. You can see how there's a gap here. So all this would do is just kind of dig a groove into both sides without actually, and then you'd end up with an area that's overfilled in the middle. So that's where this, uh, this curvy one comes in handy. Yes, it does.
So you see all these uh, large metal shavings from filing down the lead? Uh, you don't want to eat that. I know it's tempting, but uh, just don't eat this, okay? Like uh, this here is the modern alternative and like uh, apparently some people say that this is somehow safer for you but let's just like uh, look at these, these this whole, whole can is basically like a giant warning label and you don't see any warning labels on this so in a day where literally food and everything else has warning labels on it like uh, I guess how bad can it be right? But like, look at this, like, uh, if you use this modern body filler here, um, you'll spontaneously combust. And if that's not enough, uh, you'll be attacked by pirates. Oh no, that sounds terrible. And then it says down here, danger, flammable slash poison. Okay. But I thought lead was poison. I thought this was good for me. Ah, uh, look at all this. Contents may catch fire. Contents may be harmful, may irritate eyes and skin. Do not swallow, do not smoke. Do not, you only had to put that on there because somebody actually tried that. If swallowed, contact Poison Control Center or doctor immediately. So for any of those uh, safety Steves out there that feel the need to uh, lecture me on, uh, on what I do and, and uh, the things I use, uh, prepare to be promptly ignored and or publicly ridiculed. All right, well, here's the completed door as far as we're taking it anyways. There's our freebie schmoo job there. Looks a little uh, more presentable, I guess, than a bunch of ugly welds and whatever. I think I already mentioned that to do this, you know, if you're like trying to metal finish this out, you'd probably just cut out that area because there's so many holes in it and it's all buggered up and just weld in a piece, but then the problem is that we had is there's a brace underneath here. So there's only so much you can do in that regards and you still end up having to, to sculpt away at it. So we just uh, did a quick uh, tidy up there. Just, uh, I think, like I said, this door is uh, just gonna be in epoxy primer or whatever and driven like that. Also got all the trim holes welded up, uh, which is what the, the owner of this door wanted and not a, a perfect flawless job or whatever, just uh, welded them up and ground them. And somebody had, it looks like they had tried prying off the uh, the trim with like a pry bar. So there's a dent around every hole. So I just, there's not a lot of access from the backside on these doors. So I just did what I could. And again, it's not perfect. And that's not what we were trying to achieve there. And there's pitting and rust pitting all around where the holes are. So again, you know, there's only so much I can do there. There's the rust repair on the corner there. I just, again, just did a little quick dab and whatever just to kind of blend it out a little better. That's where we welded in a patch. Here's the other corner here. This is where this edge was all bent and folded over. Um, we had to do a rust repair on the inner structure, but the outer was good. It was just a little, a little chunky still. And instead of trying to, you know, work it the metal to death, I just uh, gave this a quick, uh, quick wipe as well with our product and uh, just kind of clean this edge up a lot better than, than what it was. And uh, it should look a little more presentable than a wrinkly up edge, even though this is just uh, gonna be getting run in primer or whatever. It just, uh, well, this should make it look a little better. And if it ever gets to the point where this is gonna be getting body worked and nice paint on it, I don't really like putting plastic filler on edges like this because it's not just not as strong and you know what's the first thing that's going to be getting chipped well an edge of the door at the back of the door especially you open the door up and whatever so this just uh, makes it look better and if it ever does get body work then this is basically you know a good starting point for that I think in my opinion anyways if I was trying to get a door like this actually like straight enough for paint I would just take regular plastic filler and just do a light pass over the entire door, coat the whole door, block it smooth, and then uh, go straight to primer and whatever else. On these uh, flat panels or, or newer cars like this, you know, you start trying to get uh, 
you know, just putting a little filler here and here, wherever there's a ding and then you prime it and block it and then you find more dings and then you just have to keep going back and forth. So I find the best way is just to do a really light coat over the whole thing, block it all straight and then you're done. And, uh, you know, there's no going back and forth 500 times messing around and the amount of material on it is so thin that it's like, well, it, it's no thicker than, you know, what you would have if you were just trying to get it straight with primer and, you know, filler is a lot cheaper than primer and a lot more durable. So that's the way I would do that, but I don't do that kind of work anymore. I just do the metal work. So calling this uh, good enough for what it needs to be, I think. I keep trying to film this uh, outro. This is actually several days after I finish this, but I keep being rudely interrupted. I can't even remember what I've said in this video or what uh, what the point of any of this was, but uh, there it is. And, you know, not a flawless door, but uh, I really don't think you'd probably find a much better door uh, for a 64 Impala these days. So should uh, hopefully serve its uh, purpose. Well, uh, thanks for watching, whatever that was. Um, and just a little uh, aside before we go here, uh, I mentioned a couple weeks back that we've been having issues with the uh, PayPal, the donation thing. Thanks to all you who have been sending in the donations through PayPal, but uh, it's been about three weeks now and uh, the issue still hasn't been resolved. They're still holding my account hostage or whatever. And uh, it's an issue that could be resolved with like a 30 second conversation with an actual human being over the phone. But uh, apparently that's not an option. So I just, they're basically just sending me on a loop around and around in circles, uh, you know, and talking to robots and computers and things, which just uh, just doesn't work. Replacing people with computers, it just uh, it just doesn't work. So I don't uh, have a whole lot of hope of any of that uh, being uh, recovered or anything at this point. Uh, we'll we'll see. It's still ongoing, but uh, that's uh, an update there. If any of you have been enjoying the show so far and you'd like to help out, uh, please consider becoming a uh, patron of the show. Uh, we have a Patreon set up and uh, over there we have uh, full access to all these videos without any ads in them. And there's also a few behind the scenes things from time to time, which is essentially just me ranting. So there's like 30% more Kyle rants, I guess, over there. And uh, it also helps us to uh, continue working on projects that uh, are a little more, uh, I guess, uh, you know, in line with what we want to do here, such as the chicken truck project. Um, so that's an option there, I guess, for anybody that wants to help out. Those of you who have been helping out, I uh, very much appreciate that. And uh, we'll uh, try to continue doing this for as long as we're able to. Hope to be back on the chicken truck soon once we're done fixing these stupid doors. But again, we'll see how things go and uh, we'll keep everyone updated on the PayPal situation if it improves or whatever. So thanks and uh, see you all next week.